today we are joined by none other than Ron Davis, who is the chair of OMF Scientific Advisory Board and director of the Stanford MECFS Collaborative Research Center, as well as Janet Defoe. And they do not need an introduction. They are such pillars in our community. And Janet is going to be asking Ron a lot of exciting new questions. So we'll be hearing a lot of new updates today. Well, I'm really excited to start. This is going to be a series of research updates for Ron Davis. And I know that in his last long interview with Rebecca, he didn't really get the chance to talk about the things that I knew he was the most excited about. And I and he's been wanting to update the community about these things for a long time. So we've decided to have a series and I'll interview him and um, help make sure that he um, explains things so you guys can understand them. and. And we're gonna have fun going through all his different projects and letting you know what's so exciting about what's going on in the lab. So first of all, thank you for doing this, Ron. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And um, I hope I do a good job getting you to <laughs> be the amazing <laughs> self you are on camera. <laughs> Tell us whether or not you're excited or optimistic about the research that's happening in your lab now? Well, I'm pretty excited about what's happening in the lab, and I'm also excited about what's happening uh, across the world. Um, there's a lot of activity going on, and it's a matter of time before people will come across something that's really going to make a difference. So uh, there's a lot more activity. I, that, that's what's needed. Uh, and we just need to get the various governments and different agencies to uh, uh, to give more money to get more people involved. So what's the thing that you're most excited about in your lab right now? I, I think it's the work that uh, Robert Fair has been doing with us uh, on attack and aid. So let me interrupt you so people mm -hmm. don't think that it has to do with any kind of attack. It's attack and aid. It starts with an I. Attack and mate. Doing some literature search on it, you got to be careful because the compound attack and eight, uh, is uh, made in thousands of tons because it's used in some plastic manufacturing. But that's uh, so just be careful of that. But it's made in the body. So uh, attack and eight is uh, is a pathway that gets turned on uh, with an infection. And it occurs in the mitochondria. So they, there are signals being generated uh, from the infection that turns on this pathway and is referred to as the attaconate shunt. And why it's called a shunt is the fact that uh, it takes, uh, in the mitochondria, it takes uh, a, a compound in the citric acid cycle or Krebs cycle which is, and that cycle is used to make most of your ATP for your energy. And it, 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 it basically bleeds it off into making other compounds, and one of them is ataconate, and then eventually goes back to pyruvate. So you go right back to the beginning, and you don't go through the citric acid cycle where the ATP is generated. So what this does to you in an infection is it makes you tired and you go lie down and maybe fall asleep because you don't have much energy. So it's interesting because of the fact that that's one of the symptoms of MECFS is fatigue. And of course, if you have this pathway on, you can't generate as much ATP, and which means you do not have as much energy. So when you're not sick, the normal pathway of the Krebs cycle is operating. And then when you get a viral infection, it gets shunted off to a different pathway so that the pyruvate isn't getting produced and it doesn't get doesn't make ATP. Is that correct? Well, the, uh, the, the pyruvate uh, is uh, at, the, at the beginning of it. And so it goes right back to the beginning. Uh, and so uh, you, you, it peach, keeps you from going through the citric acid cycle to generate ATP and just goes into an endless loop, basically, but not doing any good. And so um, the, the thought is that taconate is an antimicrobial, and that may help to, to fight off the infection. 
But the other thing that it does is makes you tired and you go lie down or you go someplace and uh, maybe fall asleep. And, and the consequence of that is you separate yourself from other people. So that's probably enough of a selection uh, for, to, to, to block the transmission of viruses. Uh, to be highly selective. So you're talking about evolutionarily, evolutionarily. It had a benefit. And it probably is in the animals as well. So it, it, it may have a, a, a very important benefit of separating you from, uh, from other uh, people, in people in your tribe. People in your tribe, right. And that way your tribe would survive. And your tribe will survive. Now, so the complexity is, well, okay, fine. You had an infection that turned on but it maybe it didn't turn off and why so that's what we're trying to explore uh and the exploration is uh can we find evidence that it is still on now the problem with this of course is that it's probably not on in every cell uh and and the question is what cells are is it likely to be on and uh, it's likely to be on in the macrophages or monocytes and maybe muscle um, but so what we have to look for are uh, the signatures of it being turned on. And the one way to do that is look at the RNA um, that is being produced. And uh, that's, a, that's currently what we're actively doing. And so uh, there's some really good sensitive assays for that. We have a really- What are the assays for again? Looking for the RNA, the attackinate pathway RNAs being made. And we can do that for just from bulk cells because it's a sensitive assay, it doesn't matter which ones are on, or we can get more sensitivity by going to a cell that it's likely to be on. So uh, that assay is, has been set up by Fadong Shen in our group. He's an expert, he's a physical chemist, and he's an expert at doing these kind of uh, biochemistry reactions. And uh, he's been tremendously valuable to us because he's worked out a way to do this uh, at what we call multiplexing. And the multiplexing is the fact that you can do in, in, a, in one tube, so one little test tube, you can do many, many reactions simultaneously. Makes it cheaper, makes it less, uh, less labor. And then instead of just looking for it, something that amplified, he puts it all through the DNA sequencer to see what actually got amplified. So it prevents you from making mistakes. <clears throat> And so he's been working on this for a number of different applications. Um, he started this by looking at uh, uh, inborn errors in metabolism. But uh, so, so he will uh, come back with that and a, a number of other projects that he's also involved in. But the key here is Robert Fair because he is a pathway expert and he can model all of this. And he set up a model for all of mitochondria and, uh, and then it's now made it into the attackinate pathway is integrated into this. And what he's looking for is, or is there a way in which there's something could happen and it will stay on? Does it have to have the continuous signal or is there a way to lock it on? And uh, that's what he's currently working on. And uh, see, one of the surprises for MECFS is that you get, you have an infection and you come down with this. And then you have it for a very long time, often for life. Why does it stay on? Why does it go back to normal? So that's what we have to try to, un uh, it's kind of what's the block going on? And if we can, if we can identify the block, then we have, we have a, a possibility of trying to figure out how to solve the block. And that's where a lot of our work is on. So why are you so excited about this particular hypothesis? Well, one reason is that uh, what's been done in the, with the mitochondria in patients is to, is, and it's a little confusing because people get sort of different results depending on their methods. So it's not perfect, but it says that uh, people are not burning glucose very well. And the other thing is that people aren't burning fats very well but they do burn amino acids. And that's been pretty consistent with a lot of different researchers. So you can burn amino acids. Uh, with this pathway on, uh, one of the things that happens with the taconate is it gets combined with 
uh, coenzyme A, and that's, a, that's part of the chemical process. That happens when you burn glucose, you do pyruvate and it gets combined with a coenzyme A. If you burn fats, uh, the first reactions in the burning of the fat combine it with coenzyme A, but not amino acids. So that's if it's operating normally. Yeah, so the taconite pathway would explain why you can't burn glucose very well, why you can't burn fats very well, because there's a common uh, molecule of coenzyme A. So that when you start to explain the behavior, that gets you very excited about maybe this may be what's going on. So you think this might be sort of the underlying cause or very um, initial event that happens that gets people stuck in it, MECFS? It, it's certainly possible. And of course, it's, in the, it's certainly happening in the immune cells. So that would make the immune cells not functioning that well. Uh, and there's a large number of different immune cells, and it, this needs to be looked at in all of them. Um, but it also could be going on in things like muscle. And then also you can look at the brain and in the brain, uh, the same thing would be happening. Uh, you often use glucose in the brain, uh, but the, the cells could in fact use amino acids in the brain, but the major amino acids there are glutamine and glutamate. These are the neurotransmitters in the brain. But if this happens in the brain, it means you're burning up your transmitters for energy. That would definitely cause a problem in the brain. And I presume would cause brain fog or, or something or just almost complete uh, uh, inability to think. Again, very similar to what patients experience. So you always look at, can you explain uh, symptoms? Uh, now that isn't proof that it's right. It's just that you're looking to see if that can be done. And that gives you a clue, is that maybe the right path. Well, this sounds exciting to me. And if you do find out that it's true, um, what's your step for being able to stop it or get out of this uh, shunt? Well, we're currently, uh, it depends on what's causing it, but we're currently looking at what may, uh, possibilities at the present time. Uh, it, it's likely that uh, interferon alpha is involved in this. So we're kind of exploring how we might inhibit uh, interferon alpha or, uh, or and what is uh, causing interferon alpha to be produced. So, and we would interfere with that one. And of course, this would lead to another project that I can talk to a lot later, but uh, maybe there is a, a systemic viral infection or bacterial infection, and that would then be causing this. And the best way then is to cure that virus or bacterial infection. So I know you've looked really hard for evidence of viral infection, and we can talk about that in another interview. That's right. But it may be that even though you've looked really hard, it, it, it exists somewhere right. that you haven't been able to discover yet. So many of these projects that we're going to be talking about are interconnected in, in some aspect. And uh, but then their own project on its own right, but that helps us to interact as a group, uh, people working on different parts. Okay, well, that is exciting. And um, I'm having this idea that maybe it would be cool to um, interview Rob Fair and see if he'd show people the model. Oh yeah. I, and I, he's I, got I, a beautiful, little lines with different colors yes. that are quite fun to look at. And but maybe he would, you know. He would be great at this. Uh, and, and he definitely knows this extremely well. So let's see if we can get him to be mm -hmm. part of this series. Okay. Yeah. So if you're, if this is exciting to you and you, um, Ron always needs more money to be able to do this faster they do it with one or two people they always say that they could do it faster if they had more money so if you want to donate to help it go faster um you can donate to omf.ngo which um and specify that you want it to go to ron davis or you can donate directly to the stanford genome technology center and there's a place to donate on there and we this um work could not happen without your donations so Thank you very, very much. Most of this work currently is being supported by Vinod Kosla, 
uh, in addition to uh, donations from lots of different people and patients and caregivers and so forth. So um, it's made it possible. And Vinod Kusla is supporting Robert Fair.